Welcome to 1818 Farms. I'm Natasha McCrary, the owner, and today we're going to be discussing how we construct our low tunnels. Some of you may also know those as caterpillar tunnels. Um, just to take a step back, if you didn't see our previous video, it was step one in building the tunnels, and we showed how we bend our um, conduit pipes into our hoops, so be sure to refer back to that. But before we go into the actual construction, just let yourself know there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. I'm just showing you the way that works for us. For us here, we're in zone 7A. We don't receive a lot of heavy snowfall. So I think you might have to secure it a little bit more than we do if you are in a zone where you receive um, heavy snowfall. But for us, this works great. And we're going to kind of go through the steps. If you have any questions, be sure and leave us a message because I know this can be something that you really have to think about and plan out based on the feet in your row and make sure you have all the components before you start. So we're gonna talk about the components first. Like I said earlier, we showed you how to do the hoop bender from Johnny Seeds in the last episode. So you need, this is the first thing, you know, you're gonna to have to have uh, completed before you start. We put our hoops about six feet apart on our rows, six, six and a half. That just gives us enough stability for the um, agribond that's gonna go on it. So this is gonna be the first thing. The second thing, and I had a really hard time finding these, are going to be these fiberglass poles. And I actually purchased these at Rural King. I don't know if you guys have that or not. There may be another source, but I couldn't find them at Home Depot or anywhere. They're in the fencing supplies. And this has, if you can kind of see here, it's going to have a pointy edge. And it's very stable, and this is what you're going to stake into the ground. Now, they're a little bit taller than we need. Now, if you have a different type of soil, you may not have to remove a piece, but for us, we saw off about a foot from here because we have pretty heavy clay soil and it's harder for us to drive these into the ground. We use a rubber mallet to uh, push it down maybe another foot and your conduit hoop is just going to slide right over it. So there's your second component. The next thing you're going to need is going to be your Agrabond. And this we also purchased through Johnny Seeds. We use an Agrabond 30 and there's going to be a couple different weights and for us the reason we go 30 some people go a, uh, i think it's a 19 is we can really by using this really a lot of the season limits us having to use greenhouse uh, plastic over this because this is going to get us to around 26 degrees safety with this covering so you've got your agravon the next thing you're going to need is how you're going to secure it once you go over the hoops is we have this looks like almost like a piece of cut uh plastic and it's going to snap right over the top of your of your hoop once you put the agravon on then we have stakes that we use these are also from johnny seeds that we're going to go through and secure it to the ground they're really great because they're easy to come in and out sometimes people will use just your stakes the simple stakes that you use to uh, place your ground cover that we usually have here but this is just a lot more simple for us coming in and out when we have to vent and get in to do some work and weeding and the last thing we're going to need, as you guys are going to laugh, is we have sandbags. Some people use bricks, but I find those tear. The Agrabond is really, really um, fragile, and you'll get a tear. And we just use it, go to our compost pile, we fill these up, and we drop these in to secure, and then we can just pop them off when we need to get into the tunnels. So those are your components. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go in and we're going to demonstrate building one of our low tunnels. The first step of the process is placing your fiberglass poles. And we measured them to be six to seven feet apart down the length. And then the width is going to be four feet because that's how wide uh, our plants are spaced. Then we're going to follow this by simply taking the hoops that we've already bent. And it's, it's easier with two people. And just slide them over the fiberglass poles. And then really press down into the ground so you can make sure that you're getting the strength you need so that the tunnel doesn't give during wind storms. It's a pretty simple process. It's going to go quickly because everything's going to be laid out and you're going to already have all the, the um, hoops pre-bent. And just to remind you, the hoops are from an electrical conduit and they're a half inch diameter and we bend those with the Johnny's hoop bender and so we'll simply go through and place each of the hoops. The next part is going to be 
when we're going to apply the Agravon. And we use the Agravon 30 in our case here. And you're going to kind of see it's, it's better to do it when you're not having a windy day. And this really is better if you can have two, a minimum of two people and three to four would be better. This is a, quite a short row. Most of our row, rows are 72 feet. This is probably going to be around 35, a 35 foot row. And what we're doing is we, uh, the Agrabon, you roll it out and then you're going to unroll it. It's folded over in half. And this, the good thing about the fold, it's going to give you a marking where it can be the center because it's 10 feet wide. And so you want to have enough room that we're going to be able to secure. So you want to ensure that you're, it's very balanced on each side. So you can see we're stretching it out and giving us enough room on the end. And then we're going to simply start putting on our PVC uh, snap clamps that's going to secure it. And really, you need two people, one to hold. You want to be extremely careful with these. There's not much forgiveness with the Agrabon. If you remove these, you'll get a tear. So you need to really be confident when you're applying this that they're in the correct location. And we're going to simply work from one end to the other, tightening the Agrabon as we go, and then applying the clamps. And one thing you're going to notice when we do get to the very end that you couldn't really see on the initial uh, hoop installation, we've sort of bent that hoop back a little to give us uh, a little bit of an angle. So when we secure the tail, that it doesn't have less likely that you're going to tear the Agrabon. So you can kind of see that angle there. And then we're going to simply make a tail and then use a zip tie to secure the ends. Once we have the end secure, we're going to stretch out the corners and then we're going to come in with the uh, stakes we talked about. They're actually a row cover hand pegs by Johnny Seeds. They're really easy to use and convenient in the fact that you can pull them in and out easily once you get them in. You do have to be careful that you can break them if you really hammer them in too hard. And they're going to go in simple and be quick and easy for you to remove as you're checking the tunnel or if you're harvesting. So we have those on each side and then we're going to just simply use a sandbag at the end to secure. You can also put another hand, hand peg at the end, but it's so bulky. We have always found that the sandbag works the best. And what we've done, typically we're going to have between each hoop a sandbag and then we use a peg or a stake at, at each actual bent hoop. So in between is where you're going to have your sandbags. Like I said earlier, some people will use bricks, but I find that if you get a windstorm, you're going to have a really bad tear in your Agrabon because, like I said, it is not forgiving at all. It's typically, the Agrabon is going to be useful for one season and you just throw it away. So you need to be extremely careful um, the way you secure this. Uh, and what will happen if we go below 26 degrees, this makes it extremely simple for us to apply our greenhouse plastic with the sandbags. And just lift it and then secure it. And then on the following end, you can see we're doing the same thing that we did on the first end. We're pulling the tail together. We're going to zip tie and then use the hand stakes or hand, uh, the hand pegs to secure the end. Now, one thing you're going to see is when we talked about the snap clamps, the half inch uh, look like a piece of PVC. On the ends, we use three. We use one across the top and then we'll use uh, on the sides just to kind of give you some uh, tautness and you'll see us apply those. We don't recommend that you use these on the internal hoops because you're going to be trying to lift these and vent or if you're going to harvest and you're going to tear the you're going to tear the um, the tarp if you do this you'll t you'll tear the Agrabon. So you can see it's super simple with uh, three people and everything being prepared, like I said earlier, we can probably build a tunnel in about 15 minutes. The prep work is where you're going to spend the most of your time. But you really also need to remember to watch your weather for us. Luckily for us, we don't have to use the greenhouse plastic a lot, but you select your Agrabon based on your zone and the type of protection that you need. So we hope that video really helped you see how simple and easy. For us, if you have all the components purchased, trimmed, the, the poles bent, we can probably finish everything in about 15 minutes. So really, it's not going to take a lot of your time. The time is going to be preparing everything, you know, filling the sandbags, uh, trimming your uh, conduit, trimming your fiberglass poles. Very simple. So people may say, well, why do you really need these tunnels? We haven't talked about this. This is just a great way of season extension. Otherwise, we couldn't plant things like ranunculus, anemones. You know, there are some things we never cover, but a lot of these things need this to help them focus on root, root growth and not freezing in the cold weather. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a message and I'll get back to you. 
and refer back into the video. We're going to have a list of the items that you need. I know for me, that was the hardest thing is just remembering everything that I need. But like I said, thank you for joining us today, and we hope you have a successful slow flower growing season.